Utopia. And I have here today with me a guest, Sosha Rashford. Please forgive me. <laughs> Sosha, I am, I'm horrible with names, forgive me, especially when I get a little bit nervous. But at any rate, I'm here with Sosha Rashford. She is the Director of Strategic Partnerships with Nation Builder. Um, as you may or may not know here in the nonprofit Utopia community, we've been focusing on the census, but we decided to take a little break and pick up our discussion on policy advocacy. We spoke last month on policy advocacy and community organizing and how you can develop strategies to make sure that you are being effective in your policy advocacy. We think that you'll be even more effective if you can combine that with, you know, with technology, right? Technology makes all of our lives better. And Sorsha is going to demonstrate Nation Builder. And um, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to her and let her come. Oh, no, 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 no. Before she comes in her own way, I want to share a little bit of background. She is the Director of Strategic Partnerships of Nation Builder, and she manages customer relationships and strategic partnerships for a host of the most influential political, brand, and nonprofit organizations around the globe. She is a political strategy leader, so you know that she's not just talking technology, so to speak. She has been where we're going, right? So she's committed to building community in an effort to develop more effective leaders from all walks of life. Sorsha currently lives and works in Boston, Massachusetts. She completed her undergraduate degree in political science and history at the University of Portsmouth in England before relocating to Boston, Massachusetts. At 22, she became the youngest member of the graduating class to receive a master's in political science from Suffolk University. Prior to joining Nation Builder, Sorsha worked as senior associate of Dewey Square Group, where she developed and managed grassroots organizations for a variety of candidates, ballot initiatives, businesses, and nonprofits. Sorsha has also served as a political advisor on a number of federal, state, and municipal campaigns across New England. Currently, Sorsha serves, as, serves her communities in the following capacities. U.S. Ambassador for the British and Irish Trading Alliance as a member for Suffolk University alumni and the Boston and New England Rose of Tralee. She is also the co-host of the Unap apologetic women podcast. So as I told you, you know, we're, you know, no shade to techies, but we're not just having someone who understands technology, but we under, you know, we have someone who understands strategy and she'll be able to share how we can integrate the technology into our strategy. So without further ado, Sosha. Thank you. I don't think I've heard anyone read out my bio, and so I feel like I need to <laughs> shorten it or make it a little bit fluffier. So thank you, Valerie, for, for welcoming myself uh, and the Nation Builder team into the non nonprofit Utopia community. Uh, it's been great to kind of be partners with you over the past year. Uh, I feel like it was a million years ago that we did the Lever for Change event. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Well, welcome, everyone. Today, I am going to run you through just an overview of Nation Builder, what we do, who we are, uh, and then we'll go into a demonstration of the platform. Uh, and then I really want it to be an open dialogue uh, where I can answer as many questions as possible. Kind of, you've heard my background. Uh, so really covering the breadth of both nonprofits, political advocacy, and corporations. Uh, so if we have any questions kind of across that breadth uh, and tangentially related to tech, uh, please, please pop them in the chat. Okay, so I am gonna go ahead and I am gonna share my screen. And window, share. Okay, is everyone seeing that screen? Yes, we got um, I, 
I don't see, oh, you know what? They're not seeing the screen because I have control over that. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> um, okay. So Nation Builder, we were founded by organizers for organizers. And we were created with the belief that everyone, everyone out there can lead. Our founders set out with a goal of making the tools of leadership available at an affordable price to people all over the world. And as our platform has grown and evolved, we've actually provided leadership solutions to countless political campaigns, candidates, global nonprofits, small nonprofits, corporations, higher education organizations and associations, unions, you name it. For many years, we have helped elect some of the world's leaders. And it's from those lessons and from those learnings that we've been able to really kind of develop our skill set in the nonprofit and the corporate sectors as it focuses on advocacy. <laughs> in this session, we are going to hopefully run through how it is that you can build relationships with people and put individuals at the center using technology and using advocacy strategies to ensure the values of your nonprofit and your mission are moving forward. So, theory of change. Nation Builder is grounded with our theory of change and we know that solving today's biggest challenges is not just about one leader, it's about millions. And we exist here at Nation Builder to make it possible for anyone to easily mobilize their community and lead them to action. Our theory of change is put into practice every single day with each of our customers driving to create the change they desire to see in the world. And to ensure that we're actually focused on this, we lean into our company vision and mission with all interactions from our product de development to supporting our customers, to our marketing, to our partnerships. So what is our vision and mission? Making it possible for anyone, anywhere to take action, to lead their community, to start an organization, to build a nonprofit, a campaign, a business, a movement. That is why we fundamentally exist. And this mission is the reason that we do what we do every single day. Our software ultimately is the infrastructure that empowers our customers, hopefully some of those customers might be in the room today, uh, to develop and organize thriving communities. For those of you that may not know exactly what our software entails, I wanna just share with you kind of what our experience is to even be in this conversation. We have 60 plus years of movement building experience on our leadership team alone. We engage actively with visionary engineers who are attracted to actually develop our mission as opposed to just being in the engineering motion. We have lifelong practitioners of movement building, politics, advocacy, NGOs, nonprofits, et cetera, across our entire company's infrastructure. We have academics and strategists studying the principles of leadership and organizing and community building so that we can implement those practices into our software. And lastly, we've had over 10 years of serving nonprofits, campaigns, parties, advocacies, organizations through our software. So what is that actual software? It's leadership software. That might sound fluffy and like not a clear thing, but what that is in nuts and bolts is a operating system that's designed to help leaders move supporters to action towards a shared goal. So to do that, you have the ability within our software to create a website. So think about as a content management system to engage with your data through our CRM, right? So that's your dynamic people database, to broadcast to your community via email and text. Last but definitely not least is our fundraising platform. And so that is where you have the ability to raise donations through our payment processor and also engage with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising strategies, looking at recruitment engagement with our personal fundraising pages, uh, reoccurring donations, et cetera. The other piece of Nation Builders Company is our most rec recent acquisition of the company Action Button. And so just to talk to you a little bit about that. Action Button was created so that people never missed a moment to act when they're inspired. So for example, you are reading a news article about the effect of the coronavirus on the restaurant industry. And then you think to yourself, okay, how can I actually help, right? I'm really moved by this piece, this article. Well, bam, right? At the bottom of that article or in the middle of that article, you're gonna see an action button unit that allows you to immediately donate towards the organization or to take an action, maybe it's legislative advocacy or volunteering, right in that moment of inspiration. No matter where in the world, you're able to turn a moment of empathy and motivation into positive action to help those most affected by the global pandemic 
without ever having to leave the page. When we joined forces with Action Button, it was a really powerful moment where we were bringing together the infrastructure that Nation Builder provides with this ability to meet people in the moment where they're at. And so I just wanted to highlight that for y'all. Obviously, we have our core fundamental product offering, but we also now have Action Button. And it's something that I think is really exciting for the nonprofit space in particular. So what are the results of that? We're the most used software for politics and advocacy. We've served over 100,000 organizations. There are movements that have been built in over 110 countries. We've had over 3 billion US dollars, and that's 2020 numbers, uh, raised on the platform. And we have 1.5 billion emails sent and over 260K events managed in 2020. So what have we seen? We've seen that customers who are using this integrated system have been able to recruit 71 times more supporters, have received a 7.5 times average on more donations per supporters. I'm not going to read all of these out to you, but what this is really speaking to is the ability to leverage an integrated platform. If you are out there right now and you've got a spreadsheet here and a Google sheet here and you've got MailChimp over there and you know a CMS over here and a database over there, that is not allowing you to be efficient, to actively engage with your audience in a way that's going to move them to move the needle on your mission. Our single value prop really out there in the world is that we are giving you an all-in-one software so that you can truly build relationships with people. So I want to shine a light on one of our amazing customers. Uh, and so Amnesty Indonesia. So Amnesty International is a global movement to fight injustice and campaign for human rights everywhere. Its Indonesia branch, created in 2017, serves the vital purpose of protecting human rights defenders, freedom of expression, and the right to peacefully assemble in the face of government suppression and excessive use of force. When Amnesty Indonesia released their nine-point human rights agenda in advance of the spring 2019 Indonesian presidential election, their goal was to ensure that whoever was elected would not only prioritize safeguarding those basic rights, but also specifically address human rights violations towards marginalized groups, including women, girls, and members of the LGBTQ plus community. During that September to December period, the team were able to organize over 20 events with Nation Builder Software. It was a massive opportunity for them to engage very closely with their volunteers because they'd noticed through the use of the platform that there were a lot of people putting up their hands to say, hey, I want to volunteer, but that they hadn't had the opportunity to engage with because they were coming from a disparate database. So Amnesty Indonesia launched a petition in March to protect under-equipped medical workers, 15 of whom had died of the virus within a few short weeks of the outbreak. In collaboration with national nurses and pharmacy associations, they collected more than 7,000 signatures by the beginning of April. An extremely impressive result given the uncommon nature of online petitions within the Indonesian region. In response to this pressure, the government actually pledged to set aside more than $100,000 for medical supplies as an initial measure. This is just one example of the thousands of customers that we have every day that are leveraging these tools to ensure that the work that they believe is their mission to do are able to do so. So lastly in this is what our product principles are and how we actually do this work before I go into the demonstration. So up first is this concept of owning your own data. Nation Builder is infrastructure. We do not provide any data. And so our founding principle here is that your data is yours. Your data is safe. You can access it, build into it, and you can take it with you at any point. It's a key important factor when it comes to being able to build relationships and ultimately put people at the center. So what do we mean by that? That means being able to find your people. That means being able to identify how they've engaged with you and then ultimately personalize your outreach. And then lastly, being able to actually find your leaders. Who are the people who are just organically out there spreading the word of your mission? Then moving into moving people to action. Don't just build lists. It's really great that you have 100,000 people on an email list, but what if four of them opened it, right? This is where you actually want to be moving people to action. Don't build lists, build movements. Develop supporters with paths and goals. So being able to identify ladders of engagement. If someone signs a petition, what's the next thing you want them to do? And the next, and the next. There should be multiple ladders of engagement where people can actively participate within your organization. 
use your website for action. Billboards exist. If you want to have a big shiny picture, you can go and get a billboard. But if someone's coming to your website, they've taken the time out of their day to go and do that, give them something to do and make it really easy. Automate where possible. Things drop. We're humans. Mistakes get made. And so that's where technology really can be an asset to what you're doing. Thinking about automation, it shouldn't just be an auto response because you made a donation. It should be a journey. It should be a relationship that you're building with them. They made that donation. And so reflect back to them the other ways they've involved with your organization. Actually build the relationship to move them to action. And then lastly is meet people where they're at. This one I always kind of focus in on because what I really mean here is if someone hasn't opened an email in 60 days, don't send them another one. Maybe try texting them. Maybe try calling them. Maybe try engaging them with them in a different medium. So you're truly meeting them where they're at and you're not just kind of going out there and doing a blast broadcast to the world. You're targeting it and you're meeting folks where they're at so that they can actively participate with what you're doing. And last but definitely not least is the idea of distributing leadership. You have to equip your leaders. You have to identify the people who you want to be out there in the world speaking on your behalf, on your behalf engaging with you. But you have to equip them. That can look very different for different organizations. That could be an ambassador program where you're giving them content to share with their network. That can be a, a technological, technological, technological uh, volunteer, someone who's actually willing to come in and do database updates for you, someone who is maybe going to build out the website uh, section for you. It's really going to vary organization to organization, but make sure you have a plan in place to equip a leader within anyone who puts their hand up. Are they going to be a leader for you? Incentivize peer engagement. Why is it valuable for someone to bring 10 friends to your organization? Right? Incentivize that. Maybe it's a you know virtual currency, which is a thing we have in Nation Builder. Uh, but if you're not interested in a virtual currency, maybe it's just simple as like, you know, if you recruit 10 friends, we're gonna highlight you as our volunteer of the month in our social media output, right? Whatever that looks like for you, but incentivize that peer-to-peer -peer engagement to ultimately build networks. Hey Sorsha. Yeah. Uh, can we pause for a question? It seems kind of relevant for what you're doing now. Dr. Absolutely. Bradley. Okay, so this is from HSI Social Media. I believe that's Deborah Williams. If it's not, I still say hello. Um, <laughs> so how do we get a starting point of people to outreach and engage? Are there listservs available for purchase? Can we upload from other lists of people in certain zip codes or community? And mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll go into more detail when you're doing the demonstration, but yeah. you know, I just thought I'd put that Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. And hello, Deborah. Um, hello. Thank you, Valerie, for that question. So Nation Builder is infrastructure, right? So we do not provide data. And so when you're thinking about this idea of how do we, what's our starting point, right? How do we find people to outreach and engage with? It really depends on where you're at in terms of starting your organization. And so if you are brand spanking new and you've decided that your organization is going to be for helping children um, who have lost a carer during COVID-19, as an example, I know there's a lot of those nonprofits popping up all over the country. If that's your base, you need to identify the stakeholders that would be within that base. So think about um, local school uh, committee members, think about teachers, think about PTA um, engagement, think about local church communities, think about uh, local chambers of commerce. From there, you're gonna get your kind of stakeholder group. And then from each of those buckets, you're going to need to identify what asks you want to make of them. That can be as simple as we would like for you to send out to your audience that we are starting a nonprofit and this is what we need. Or it can be a direct donation ask. Maybe it's a real monetary value relationship that you're looking for with an individual. Uh, but that's if you're like starting out from scratch. If you've been around for four years, five years, six years, you're gonna have kind of a base. Or if you don't have a base, you need to be identifying folks on um, amplification platforms. So think of social media, uh, think of direct mail, being able to actually go and submit uh, to your local uh, election office if you are um, doing anything in the advocacy space but you're able to get registered voter data. That's going to vary state by state as to who is legally allowed to actually acquire uh, voter data. 
And then there is always the option to purchase data sets. Uh, there are a number of companies out there. L2 is one, Accurate Append is another, um, Data Axel. There's so many companies where you can actually go and purchase data. Um, that's going to be your most expensive option. And it's also going to be your hardest option in terms of like actually getting engagement with folks. So I really would recommend look at your stakeholders, look at the community you're actually trying to serve, use the amplification tools like social media and direct mail before you go into the world of purchasing uh, data sets. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. So those are our product principles. The four things that I just walked through there, they are how we build our platform. Every time we do a new feature, every time we are looking at how do we make our software better, it comes back to these four product principles. Um, and so if anyone has any thoughts on them, please put them in the chat. We always are looking for feedback uh, on how we can best assure that our software is the right thing for people when they are looking to take a step of leadership. So with that all said, I am going to jump in I think I'm going to actually have to stop sharing and reshare uh, because I am in a different window. So we're going to go over here. I'm going to share my screen again. Window matters. Share. Okay. And then Valerie, if you can switch it on so everyone can see it. Awesome. Okay. So what you are seeing here is a Nation Builder website and they the reason I start with this is because it's helpful to kind of get a full understanding of what the breadth of our product is. And so as you'll see, this is a fictional organization used for training. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of interact with this front facing site as if I was, you know, any person who could go to this public website out there in the world. So I'm up first, I'm going to take an action. I'm going to go over here to this joint use campaign. Immediately, what you'll see is this has brought me to a petition page where I can actually sign up and identify that I want to interact with the joint use campaign. So I'm going to go in here and I am going to be, who am I going to be? I am going to be Moby, Moby Apples and apples at Moby.com. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. So I filled in my basic information and then I've got an option here where I can say, actually, I also want to volunteer for you guys. I could also identify that I didn't want this to be public information, but I'm going to leave that. And then here I can say, hey, I would also like to receive the weekly newsletter. Now I'm going to add my signature. So the first thing that we see taking place here is the ability to share this out. If we think back to those product principles that we talked about, this is anchoring in peer engagement. We are immediately giving them an option to share this out with their network, with their friends and family. You can see all the different options here. You've got social media, WhatsApp, email. Uh, for right now, I'm gonna say no thanks. But the power of this is if I was to share this out and then Valerie clicked on it, I would receive credit for having recruited Valerie into the organization. It's a really powerful way that happens automatically. If you remember when we talked about being able to automate things, this happens automatically without you having to do anything. So I'm going to say no. Oh, Valerie. Oh, yeah. I, I like that accountability, you know, mm -hmm. holding your members accountable for doing the outreach yeah. as they said they would. It really is. And it gives your members a sense of ownership right? They know that they're going to receive credit for having brought their folks into the network. And so it really does incentivize from both sides um, of accountability, as well as that like sense of leadership uh, within your org. Uh, awesome. Okay. So then the next piece of this is you're seeing I have been taken on a ladder of engagement. So I've signed my petition. And now I've been redirected to say, hey, will you also volunteer? You'll notice here that I am in what we call a logged in state. So it is saying, hey, I'm Moby, right? Because I've just entered my information, so I don't need to enter that again. If you're not Moby, it's giving you the option to go in here and actually log out and sign in as an individual. So I'm going to say, yes, I will bring supplies. I will clean up after the event, but I'm not able to shuttle folks. I need to give them my cell phone number. 
and great. And a good time to call me is at 2 p.m. on Saturday. And then my address is 123 Main Street, Weymouth, Mass. And I am available on Monday, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 p.m. to 3 to 6 p.m. Awesome. I don't have any other comments or ideas to add at this time. And so I am just going to move on and I'm going to save my volunteer info. So again, we're getting prompted. Share this out with your friends and family. You absolutely have the ability to turn this off because sometimes it can become a little bit pushy if you're doing it on every single action that you're asking them to take. Okay, question so, for you. So yeah. when you share this out, what are you sharing? Are you sharing the fact that, you know, I signed up and I volunteered, I'm going to do this, 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 or are you sharing a blank screen, a, a blank form where other people can, can sign? Oh, yeah. I'm going to show you. If... Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm not logged into anything, but what you're actually sharing there is that you have taken the action mm -hmm. and that you would like someone else to take the action. Got it. I love this. That's what that looks like, Valerie. That's a really good question. I'll make sure to show you that when I go into the control panel, yeah. Okay, great, thanks. Of course. Um, awesome. So again, I'm now prompted to RSVP for an upcoming event. I can see here, though, that there are no upcoming events available, but I have the option to say, hey, you can click here to add your own event. What we call this is user-generated content. It really varies on your organization as to whether or not you want to let everyone go in here and click to add their own event, or if you want to set up some parameters where you would need to approve it prior. Both of those options are totally fine. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go ahead and create an event. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into the control panel, um, the back end of Nation Builder, but we refer to it as a control panel. So. Before I do that, though, I just wanted to check in and see if there were any questions from that front-facing site. Uh, Valerie, if you are talking, you are muted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I was just saying, let me check for you. So far, no questions on, on what you've shared so far. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, then let's dive back in to... And awesome, yeah. So then, Valerie, whenever you are ready, you can pop. Okay. Okay. All right. So we are now in the Nation Builder Control Panel. So every time you would log into your Nation Builder Control Panel, you'll land on what we call a dashboard. That is intentional. We want you to be able to come in and see how you are progressing towards your goals. As you can see right here, there is a serious amount of work left to be done within this particular nation, right? We haven't achieved our goals. We're not even kind of moving through the progress needle. But it's a really good way for you to be able to always kind of come in and get an instant moment of here's where we are in terms of the goals that we set forth. Just to orient you, so on the left-hand side, we have what we call our navigation bar. And that takes you through those core principles of Nation Model that we talked about. So your people section, that's that dynamic database, your CRM, your website section. So that's your content management system where you can spin up different websites, your communication ability. This is where you have the functionality of texting or email blasting, or your workflows, which is our answer to kind of email automation, the way that you can automate um, different email responses based on how people take actions. And then lastly, here is your finances. That's where you're going to be able to track any incoming donations, any outgoing, um, also creating those personal fundraising pages and pledges and etc. So to start us off, I want to jump into this area right here, which is called our activity stream. Our activity stream is going to always give us a running kind of listicle of everything that's taking place in the nation. So this all will hopefully click for us now because we can see here that Moby Apples has landed in the database just by taking that action on the website. Oh. So now if I jump into Moby's profile, 
what we're going to see is his individual profile within this nation and how built out it is. So up here, we've got all the information that Moby added on the front facing site. So we've got first name, last name, we've got the address that he added, phone number and the email address. And then as we get a little bit further down, we have some nation builder specific um, attributes. So the first of that is what we call a point person. A point person is just the person who is responsible for the relationship with Moby and your organization. So in this example, the fundraising assistant of Training One is responsible for the relationship with Moby. What that means is the fundraising assistant is now going to get an email that lets them know that Moby has signed up um, and it allows them to kind of manage that relationship and make sure that they're continuing to build the relationship with Moby. Then as you come down here, we have what we call tags. Tags are a way that you can append data to an individual's record. You'll notice that all of these tags came automatically from Moby having taken an action on the front facing website. So if we think back to the first action he took, which was the joint use campaign, that tag has been appended from that action. Then when we went to the volunteer page, we can see that we've signed up to be a volunteer, that we've identified we wanted volunteer updates, and then the two types of volunteer activities that we signed up for, so cleaning crew and supplies. If you remember, I didn't sign up for the shuttle bus, but let's say in this example, maybe Moby calls back and says, hey, I meant to actually also sign up for the shuttle bus. What you can do is you can pop in here and just type in what it is that you are looking for. And I am going to see what the shuttle, there we go. Awesome. So now I've added that to the tag. And so now I can identify all of the things that Moby would like to do. Mm -hmm. Moving on down here, we have the paths. And so a path is like what I talked about earlier of that ladder of engagement. So we saw what that looked like to a supporter of yours, right? We saw that on the front facing site where they signed the petition, then they went to be sign up on a volunteer, then they were asked to engage with an event. Mm -hmm. This is the internal version of that. So this is for your team to basically manage those ladders of engagement that they need to take your supporters on every single day to achieve mm -hmm. your ultimate mission as a nonprofit. You can really easy interact with these, right? You can move people along just by a simple mm -hmm. click. Um, it's a great way to really get granular understanding of how people are actively participating with your organization. Okay, the question thing, for you. Who would actually, for example, be the one managing the software and the activities? That's a great question. So this depends on your organization's size. Uh, so we have a you know a number of global um, nonprofits, and in global nonprofits you have different teams. So you'll have your development team; they'll be responsible for all things finances. You have your communications team, etc. Oh, okay. awesome. the, more, the more common use case, Valerie, and especially in the smaller nonprofit space, is you're going to have volunteers that are actually going to be helping you to manage this database. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, you'll have one person or maybe two people that are paid staff mm -hmm. that are in there creating web pages, sending out email blasts. Uh, but a lot of our customers really do rely on a full kind of team of volunteers to make sure mm -hmm. that they are actively building relationships with their supporters. Okay. This is great stuff. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, the last thing I wanted to show you in that individual profile is if I scroll down here, we have the ability to interact with Moby. So the first thing here is an internal note. So I would be able to add an internal note and then anyone else on staff or volunteering who has access to the control panel would be able to see that. I can also send a one-to-one -one email directly to Moby from Nation Builder. If I'm on a call with him, I can log a contact. If he tells me that he's coming to a specific event, I can go in here and I can add him to that event. If he is pledging a certain financial amount, I can do so here, or I can actually make a live donation if I've got him on the phone and he wants to give us our credit, his credit card information. All of that will then live 
in this activity stream. So if we think back to when I first came into the platform and we landed on the dashboard, that was the activity stream for the entire nation. But on each individual's profile, we also have an activity stream for exactly what they are doing at that moment in time. So it's a really great way for you to be able to identify how people are actively engaging with you. Mm -hmm. Can so, you have can you yeah. have more than one nation? With absolutely. Okay. Yeah, you absolutely can. Um, but so what we've seen so far, right, is that individual idea, right? That one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. relationship building. But where the power of our software really comes into play is when you're doing that at scale. So I am going to come up here to the tags and I'm going to click on this joint use campaign tag. What that does is it actually automatically filters the database to show me everyone that has the joint use campaign petition tag. Why is that important? Because we need to be communicating to people based on how they've engaged. And so this is allowing us to kind of really get a slice of our audience to say, okay, there's 2,855 people that have interacted with that campaign. But now I can take that a little step further and I can go in here and I can say, I want to see everyone in that 2,855 that is emailable. Ooh. We can see that that really drops us down, right? We've lost kind of over a thousand people there because maybe the other thousand haven't opted in to receive email. If we think back to meeting people where they're at, maybe they're textable. Maybe they've opted in to communicate with us in a different way. The other thing to show you here is the ability to look at that by geography. So I'm gonna type in here, address near, and I'm gonna say is within um, 250 miles of Boston, Massachusetts, and a filter. Okay, so that's really brought our list down to we've got 42 people now that we can actually interact with. Okay, can you scroll oh. down so we can see the list? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So this is that individual profile, but you can see that it's kind of just the top level, just what you got would it. need to know. So the name of that individual, their tags, etc. Mm -hmm. This is powerful. Very but what I could do right now, and a thing that a lot of our customers do, so what you'll notice is we're in what we call list view. So you're getting that kind of like high level overview of the individuals. Mm -hmm. But if I want to do this based on geography, let's say I'm hosting an event, I could navigate into what we call map view. And what that's going to do, Valerie, is that's actually going to plot people specifically in a map on where they're located based on the address information that they gave us wow. on the website. Yeah, it's so powerful. Um, so let's like. see how the spotty net takes us. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like, I like, I like. And you can do this, you know, with any geography, right? It's any geography, exactly. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let that load for a sec. Sorry, I'm in a co-working mm -hmm. space today, so my Wi-Fi is not as great okay. as it normally is. Oh, that's um, fine. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so we've got those 42 people, and we set the geography. If I scroll up here, just as a reminder, mm -hmm. to be 250 miles. So that is within a 250 mile circumference mm -hmm. of Boston, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And if I keep scrolling in we are kind of able to get a sense for where the majority of people are. So what I'm noticing here is that we've got a heavy population in New York. So I'm really okay. going to hone in on that. Okay. Um, and now as I keep coming in, great. We've got a bunch of folks in here that we can start to interact with. And so to do that, I would simply click on that little gray dot and we will get an update on who that individual is. So this is how we present that in map view. So we can see really granularly, even though yeah. we've just kind of on its scale of who mm -hmm. these people are. So yeah, so that's the, that's the map uh, function and kind of just a basic overview of our people database and the power that you have there to really filter 
um, and sort your data. Do you have any questions on that from the audience? Um, there, there are no posts for questions. Okay. All good. Okay. So then the last thing I want to show you is how do you actually communicate with these people? So to do that, what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and I'm going to add all of these people to a list. And I am going to add them to my by LA event 2021 list. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So now I've added all these individuals to a list so that I can interact with them. So I'm going to mm -hmm. come over here to our workflow section, which is where we will set up an email automation. So to do that, we would just navigate into new automation. And then we're going to name this. This is going to be our event. RSVP push 2021. Okay. And the first thing I'm being prompted to do is to choose who this is going to. And mm -hmm. so that's where I'm going to pick my list that we just created. And I'm going to say that I want it to go to my LA event 2021. Mm -hmm. The other option I have right here, Valerie, is to say a based on a page action. And so what I mean by that is if someone RSVPs for an event on the website, you have the ability to trigger multiple emails based on that action. It's a really powerful tool. Wow. So then if I come in here and I hit continue, what it's going to do, it's going to take me through the process. So up first, we are going to start with everyone on that list. And then I am going to add an email. So, so we're going to send it from the executive director of the organization. This is the email name. And then as we scroll down here, I'm just going to clone this from a previous email blast so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And I'm going to hit save and continue. So immediately I'm prompted into the settings. So this is the basic information, right? So the subject line, who's it coming from? What's the preview text, et cetera. Oh. I'm happy with all of that. So I'm going to hit save and continue. And then that's going to bring me into my look and feel. So what do I wow. want this to look like right all of this here we have a number of different options i can say i want it to be an event but i'm going to stick with that basic with logo now i'm going to move into where we actually edit the content and so here we are we are in the email itself and so what we are seeing here is the ability to interact with the data that we just saw in the um, people section. So mm -hmm. specifically, this here is called the smart field. So we're pulling in their first name. If we don't have a first name, we're pulling in the word friend. And then here we can see, we know you live in address city and that's pulling in the address that this individual is living in. So I'm logged in as nation builder. So that's my name. Mm -hmm. And the city that I'm based in is in Los Angeles. That data is reflecting wow. right there. Wow. Right. And so there's a bunch of data sets that we can think about here. If I go to that add and then smart field, this is going to give me all of the data I can choose from. And a really powerful one that a lot of our nonprofits use is this donations. And so you're able to go in and say your donations year to date. Right. And so if we're putting this in an email, we might say, Thank you so much for your movement of donations here to date. We have been able to help 500 children because of your work. So this is a way of personalizing your emails even beyond the name. You know, it's letting people know we're, you know, we're very much aware of what you've done for us. Right? This, exactly. This exactly. And so we'll see here. Obviously, Nation Builder hasn't been doing very well with their donations, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. but you can see specifically this is how it renders back to the end user to say hey, this is how much you've donated. And what we know from the years that we've been in this world is the more you personalize, the higher your engagement rate is going to be. 
-hmm. It's just so important. Um, and it, it's good that you're not waiting till say the end of the year. You know, usually when I see letters like this, it's at the end of the year for taxes, but you yeah. can run this report any time of year yeah. just yeah. to thank and remind people. Exactly. And people who donated to you are more likely to donate again. It's easier mm -hmm. to retain a old donor than it is to acquire a net new. So really mm -hmm. remember that when you're thinking about outreach as we're getting towards Giving Tuesday, the mm -hmm. folks who have already donated before are more likely to donate to you again. So make those asks and make them personal. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So now I'm going to save and continue. And the last step in this process is to review it. So it's showing me here on the left what my email looks like. I'm pretty happy with that. And then over here on the right hand side, I'm getting a preview of what this looks like. So we've got the title, uh, or sorry, the subject line preview and the who it's coming from. And I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna hit save to automation. And now here is really where the power is. So we know that we're sending that email to everyone on this list. Now I'm gonna say, I want in four days to send them another email. And now we go in here and we say, Erin, and this is going to be RSVP event two. And we are going to grab the event invite number two. And that is save and continue. And then again, this process will come through. So I am going to hit save and continue. And we'll go through those same beats. Great. We're really begging them to come to their event this time. <laughs> and save to our automation. <laughs> and so now we have this email that's going to happen in the background. We aren't going to have to think about it as an organization. Yes, we're going to have to do that upfront work. But we have this really powerful mechanism where it's saying, wait four days, send this out. And you can be dynamic in the content asks, etc. But it gives your organization more agility to actually get on the phones and be fundraising or be attending events, whatever they really need to be doing to serve your mission. Okay, now can you use this with, I guess, robocalls and text messages as well? Yes. Um, so robocalls, we have an integration, we have a partner that we integrate with for that, but we do have texting natively. So if I jump here into the broadcaster, what you're going to see in here is we have the text and phone. So with every nation model account, you do get access to a phone number. And so you can set that phone number up however you would like. So if I jump in here to the voice you can see where folks have actually called in. And if they leave a voicemail, that recorded voicemail will exist on that individual's profile. You also have the option, Valerie, to ha set up forwarding. Um, so if you have you know, a, an office phone or a cell phone that you use, you have the ability to be able to forward this number so that you're getting all that data and information in here. Um, on the texting, you can see right here, I will pop into texting. And there's a couple of really cool things that we can do. So one is the blast. So we can send out a blast text message to everyone that meets a certain criteria. Or we can set up keywords. And so keywords are a really powerful way to acquire net new supporters or net new RSVPs. So you're seeing here that we've got a couple of keywords already set up. So we've got barbecue, and that mm -hmm. is for a specific event. So that's an RSVP. Garden is also a specific event. And then we have pigs for a, uh, a join, so a text to join. Maybe it is a nonprofit that's supporting pigs or farming. Um, you can kind of get creative with, with what those keywords are. That's great. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so that this is, is, kind of this, is not, this is not, <laughs> the, not the keywords you would use for the policeman, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. No, no. Um, but yeah, so that's that's Nation Builder. Um, we truly do build software that builds movements. And as you are very aware, QR codes are the thing at the moment. Valerie's got one in her background. Um, so feel free to scan it. It will connect you with myself and our team. 
Um, and then, yeah, I'm here. If you have questions, please put them in the chat or let Valerie know and, and she can connect okay. up. This is awesome. Now, another question for you. Do you have dashboards um, mm. that, that folks can use for the software? Yes. So we have the dashboard that we landed on, right? So that's kind of the mm -hmm. goals overview. Right. But then if you come in here to our growth tab, what you're going to see is the kind of data visualization of what's happening in your database. Mm -hmm. And so this is where you can kind of interact and understand, you know, reoccurring donations, one time, uh, total supporters, if you're doing members, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we do also have actually an annual report um, that is kind of pre-fixed, but it gives you really what you need across the board. Um, and so that you can generate as a PDF or you can generate okay. that as a CSV, depending on what your needs are. Okay. Now, if I were to buy this, mm -hmm. you know, or to, is there someone from the company who could train me, you know, walk me through all of this you know just like you're doing yeah. it and you'll just help help me with my specific needs absolutely so um actually what i'm gonna do there is i'm gonna pull up just so that everyone can see nation builder pricing um so we have a couple of different pricing packages so the first is your starter kit. And so if you remember right back to the top of our conversation this morning, um, we started to be affordable to everyone. That is a key component to us. So our pricing does start at $29 a month. Um, and that gives you everything I showed you today. Mm -hmm. That is like the base kind of infrastructure that we give to people. And then you can kind of increase that. We have an add-on functionality. So you can think through like, different um, add-ons that you would like to include into your um, nation. And then you can also go into our start, into our pro or enterprise offering. So that's your like pricing. And then with every single nation, we have a two week free trial period. And in that free trial period, you will be interacting with one of our onboarding specialists. Mm -hmm. And so you can schedule a time with them we also offer demos twice a week. So that's on Tuesdays and Thursdays where you can come and interact live. And then finally, we have a Intro to Nation Builder course, uh, which we actually just relaunched uh, a month ago now. And it is a self-guided course where it kind of remembers where you're at and will give you tips on how to engage in the platform in a better way. So all of those things are free or included with your software costs. And then we do have an option for a kind of immersive um, eight hour or, or kind of two day training session where you implement mm -hmm. um, Nation Model and that does have a cost affiliated with it. Uh, but we really do have a lot of options out there for folks who are just getting started and wanting to get their feet wet in the software. Okay, wow, this is powerful, powerful. Now, I, I guess a question I had when we started the goals once you formulate goals how do you actually input those into the system i, I know it shows up in your dashboard yeah. but. so automatically um because we're an integrated system if your goal is let's jump back over there so i can show you so if we come back into the goals and your goal is to what goal do we want? Let's do a new goal. Um, ah, yeah. <laughs> right there. So in here, this is where you have all of the options for your goal types. We as Nation Builder do not have an opinion on what your goal should be, but we just have ways in which we can automatically track it for you. So mm -hmm. for example, if we wanted to identify a goal of the total number of people who have donated so unique people versus unique donations um we would say okay i'm gonna say i want 150 donors um and q4 so that's my goal okay. and then down here i can identify what we call tracking codes so this is just a way to categorize your finance streams 
So mm -hmm. I want it to be everything, regardless of whether it was an online donation or an offline donation. I just care about the number of donors. So I'm not going to tie it to a tracking code. Then here, because I said it was Q4, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to start it in September 1. And we are going to wrap that out in December. Ah, okay. And now we're going to create our goal. And the first thing you'll see here is that it's gathering data. So right now, it's looking to see, have we already engaged with any of, like, have we already achieved some of those goals? Have we gotten donors um, into the nation? And so what you'll see here, it automatically said that we're at Ooh. two of 150 because we've had two donors that have come into the nation since the beginning of Q4. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah. then the, the leader is the person who's responsible for that activity. Is, no. is that what that so that's leader? Actually, yeah, that's a great question. So that would actually be under the your contribution. The leader mm -hmm. would be anyone who has achieved the most towards that goal. So think if um, if I had recruited you, Valerie, mm -hmm. to be a donor, mm -hmm. I would appear at the top of that leaderboard because I have brought in the most number of donors. Okay. And then your contribution, is that financial or is that your activity? That's your activity towards that goal. And so what that's actually referring to is the person who's logged in to the control panel. So you can see yeah. here that I'm logged in as Nation Builder. Um, and so my contribution is not very good. <laughs> okay. So this is interesting. You have a way of keeping track of your own progress and what your own contribution is. But the person who's managing all of the activities also has a way of keeping track of everyone else's activities and contributions to the efforts. Exactly. This is very powerful. Powerful, powerful, powerful. So I, I'm going to check the questions. I don't think we have more questions. And what I'll do too is, you know, share this video, you know, in my networks too, to, to let others see it this has been very powerful it seems like you've added some features we have so, yeah 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 we've really been kind of hard and and building that out and you know it's really exciting we're we're at a, a moment where a lot of people are trying to lead and nation builder has been a part of some fantastic stories and would love the opportunity to be a part of others okay well we will definitely need to have you come back yet yes. again you know because it, it seems like you have added a ton of things i'm like wait a minute i don't remember this I don't remember. <laughs> so, so so that's that's awesome so you're constantly evolving yeah absolutely and always again in alignment with those product principles that we talked about and so that i think is the key differentiator with a lot of you know other SaaS companies in the space is like we're grounded in truly being the best organizing software in the world. Um, and to do that, we have to be able to lean into our vision and mission as well as our product principles. So, um, yeah. Okay. And one final question, Sorsha, at least final for me, um, interface with other software. Do you interface with any financial software? Yes. So we have what's called an open API. Um, so anyone who, you know, wants to um, either feed data in or extract data out, uh, that is obviously authorized to do so within that individual's nation, um, has the technical accessibility to. We have hundreds of integrations that are out there in the world, some of them being financial, some of them being like robocalling, field work, et cetera. Um, and so I can make sure that I can drop a link to um, our ecosystem to you, Valerie, if that's helpful. Yeah, it, it would definitely be helpful. And so okay. what I'll do is share this video again in my network. And if you have that link, and then I will obviously refer people to you <laughs> to come your way. This Absolutely. So fun. yeah, I will this up right now and then i think i can actually pop it in to the mm -hmm. chat here for everyone okay great um, chat with, there we go okay 
that, okay. that came through. Okay, awesome. Let me let Ready? me copy. I'm gonna copy it and paste. Um, just bear with me. Okay, and now it is I think I got yeah, I got the wrong one. Okay. No worries. I'm, yeah, I'm copying. I'm trying if my system will allow me, I am copying what you posted in the <laughs> private chat to the to the public uh, comments. Uh, there we go, perfect. Um. I got it. Yay. Yeah. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So is there any anything else that you want to share with our audience before we go? Just thank you. Thank you for having me. I uh, really appreciate it. It's always great to, to partner with you, Valerie. So we're excited to continue to do so. And if, uh, if anyone has questions, we're more than happy to answer. OK, awesome. I want to say thank you again, Sorsha. I want to thank our listening audience for sharing the time that you could. We realize that you're very busy. Uh, we will make sure that this video is available to you on YouTube as well as our Facebook page. And for those of you on our email distribution list, we will make sure that you get a copy of this video as well. And obviously, we're going to post it in our community. All right. So without further ado, we're going to say goodbye and thank you again, Sasha. Of course. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone.